Hi, here we are, ready for all that Sokotoa work to pay off in the unit circle. If you've been in trig already, you know that the unit circle is the way we're going to find sines and cosines and tangents of angles bigger than 90, because you'll notice that using Sokotoa, you can only find the sine and cosine of an angle that fits inside a right triangle. And those angles are always less than 90 degrees. So if you want to find a 130 degrees or a 5,000 degrees or a negative number or even zero, you can't do it without the unit circle. All right, let's get started. So the question I get a lot is, why is it called the unit circle? Well, that just means the radius is one. So literally, a unit circle is a circle of radius one unit. Of course, we're not talking about meters or inches. They just call it units. What makes our special circle the unit circle is that we've slapped it onto the xy axes that you've seen in algebra before. So this is x, this is y, and the unit circle is centered at the origin with a radius of one unit. So what's really great about this, as we'll see in later videos, is at this point you could just make a right triangle, and that right triangle is going to have a radius of a hypotenuse of one, which means, hey, if this angle happened to be 60 degrees, we could, and it has a hypotenuse of one, it's like, oh, that's our 30, 60, 90. So we could just drop in our fraction version of that special triangle, and bingo, we're finding the sine and cosine of angles. Of course, how's that going to work? Well, it turns out that you'll notice that this one half ends up being the x-coordinate of this point out here at the tip of the radius, tip of the hypotenuse, and the vertical side here is the y-coordinate. Turns out that this coordinate, the coordinate of any point on the unit circle, is going to be the sine and cosine, or more accurately, the cosine and the sine of the angle that that radius makes with the x-axis. So here's a more formal drawing. For any angle theta, the coordinates at the tip of the triangle are going to be cosine theta comma sine theta. Now because this circle has a radius of 1, this point is 1 comma 0, so the biggest cosine could ever be is 1, and similarly this is negative 1 comma 0, so the smallest cosine could ever be is negative 1, and the sine will do the same thing. It'll go from positive 1 to negative 1. Um, so that's pretty neat. If we drew a theta, it might be confusing about where to draw a theta, but if theta was more than 180 degrees, for example, like it was down here somewhere, there's my point. Theta would be like this entire angle that I've drawn the arc through. And then, again, this is going to be cosine, sine. Pretty exciting stuff. Once I'm here, we'll find out that we have to then draw in a triangle. But we'll get to that later because, you know, this chapter has eight or nine videos in it. And those are going to be gradually building us up to be able to find a sine or cosine of any angle. So it's not, this is rocket science, it's going to take a while. We just need a few vocab words. One is the standard position. So just like a clock always starts at 12 o'clock, you know, turns out they're a little bit annoying and angles all start at the three o'clock position. So do right, the positive x-axis, this is the x-axis. I didn't even draw in the y-axis because we basically never ever use the y-axis in, in unit circles. So it's, it's almost best to pretend it's not there most of the time because some of the most basic mistakes you can make involve you using the y-axis when you should have been using the x-axis. So theta starts it at the positive x-axis. It goes counterclockwise, so around to the left is how I would say it. And then the terminal side is the name of, you know, wherever theta stops, that's our little radius of length one, right, from the unit circle. That's called the terminal side. Good word to know. Doesn't hardly ever comes up. Now, reference angle is the most important word that you'll hear again and again and again. And this reference angle concept is really the key to how we're going to use the unit circle to find the sine and cosine of all these crazy thetas. The reference angle is the angle between the terminal side and the x-axis, wherever the nearest x-axis is. So the theta I just drew here, it it's, ends right here. So the shortest angle to the x-axis would be the one I've drawn in right there. But what if my theta had gone, that previous one I showed you, that went all the way around to here, and we had something sticking out like that? This angle down here's reference angle is going to be this angle. It'll just be that acute angle 
between the x-axis and the terminal side. The reference angle is always acute, always less than 90 degrees. Really important, and that's what's going to allow us to turn any terminal side into a right triangle to find sine and cosine with. All right, so just for kicks, let's practice drawing a couple of reference angles because it's such an important concept. 30 degree reference angle in the third quadrant. Now, I haven't really talked about this yet, but the quadrants go one, two, three, four. You just take them in order as you start from zero and go through higher angles. So the third quadrant's down here. 30 degree reference angle means we want to make an angle of 30 degrees with the x-axis. So just draw in a 30 right there, and bingo. There is my 30 degree reference angle in the third quadrant. The biggest mistake you can make, the number one thing not to do, is to accidentally make your reference angle from the y-axis. Like I said before, this is the most common mistake. If I had done 30 degrees from the y-axis, I'd end up with this guy right here, different side, right? So once I started making my triangle, I'm working with a different triangle and everything's messed up. So do not do this. Always do from the x-axis. If you have to, just pretend the y-axis isn't there. Scribble it out when you sit down, whatever. Do not want to use the y-axis. Another quick one, 30 degrees, this time in the fourth quadrant. So we just said the fourth quadrant's over here. That makes 30 degrees here, because now I have a 30 degree angle between the x-axis and my terminal side. And from there, I could go on doing my unit circle stuff, of drawing triangles and everything. We'll get to that in later videos. All right, so I just want to introduce a concept here that we'll emphasize later as well, the bow tie angles. If you look at the previous two slides, previous two examples, we did a 30 degree, reference, 30 degree reference angle twice. We did it once in the third quadrant, once in the fourth quadrant. We could have also done it in the second quadrant, and then we could have done it in the first quadrant as well, where the angle just would have been 30. So it turns out that for any given reference angle, there's four possible angles. They would, um, there's four angles that would have that same reference angle. So this drawing looks like it might be 60 degrees here. 60 here, 60 here, 60 here. Check that out. We got something that looks just like a bow tie once I turn them into right triangles. So when I say the bow tie angles, this is what I mean. It's the set of four angles which all have the same reference angle. And that's an important concept because it means that the sine and cosine, all four of these angles, have the same sine and cosine, just with some plus and minus signs different, which we'll get to later. Four angles with 30 degree reference angle. If I put a 30 here, 30 here, it's going to be, so this angle was 30. Angle from here all the way to here is going to be more than 90 degrees. It'll be 180 degrees, plus it looks like 60, so this will be 150 degrees for this side. This side down here, to get to that, we have to go all the way through 180 degrees, and then another 30. 180 plus 30 is 210 degrees. And then to get to this one down here, it looks, it looks like it'd be so easy to start at the x-axis, start at zero and go down to that, but that would be a negative angle. We're not going to do negative angles yet. So to the actual um, angle is going to be, we have to start at zero again and go all the way around, past all these other angles, all the way to here. And that's going to be a total of 180 plus 90 plus 60. Oh man, that's 330 degrees. Really huge angle, right? Up to this point in geometry, you probably never saw an angle bigger than 180. Because as soon as you make an angle bigger than 180, you might as well just make the smaller angle on the other side. But in trig, we always have to start at zero and work our way counterclockwise. So that's why we're going to get stuck with some really big angles eventually. Kind of a bummer, but hey, trig wouldn't be annoying if they didn't put all this stupid stuff in there. Radians. Big bugaboo. Guess what, kids? We're not going to do this now. I find that the biggest problem that kids have, the biggest confusion, is radians. So we're going to blow it off and do everything in degrees, like everything about the unit circle. We're going to do degrees first. And then actually, after we've gotten used to all that stuff, it won't be quite as confusing because we're not using radians. Then the next chapter will be about radians, and we'll basically just revisit everything really fast. It's just like meters versus inches. Once you know how to do everything in inches, meters is just a conversion factor away. Uh, similar for radians, we're going to ignore it for now. And looking ahead, I just want to encourage you guys to do all the videos in order. 
learn to do it the right way. I'm going to be presenting things to where you'll be able to find the cosine and sine of any angle on the unit circle, plus, minus, you name it. We'll use reference angles, we'll use triangles, the special triangles and everything. We'll do everything the right way. Now a lot of times kids think this is the hard way and it's really confusing, but like I said before, that's partially that's because of how teachers always approach it. Since in these videos we started with Sokotoa, it should build pretty well and I think you'll be able to do it if you just follow it in order and keep up and try it along with me. The easy way is just memorizing the unit circle chart. The one you can download, the circle with all the stuff on it. And I'm going to have that chart on this website, but the problem with memorizing that chart is that you forget it. So if you memorize it for your quiz, you'll forget it before the test. So you have to rememorize it for the test, and then you have to rememorize it for the midterm, and then it's going to show up on the final. And then next year when you're in calculus, they're going to throw some pies and a couple of sines and cosines at you. And you're going to have to get out the stupid chart again and look everything up. Maybe even memorize it for the test, depending on if you have a mean teacher in calculus. But I just find that kids, if they learn to do it the right way, and sort of learn and understand the unit circle, even though it seems really foreign and hard now, it'll stick a lot better and you'll be able to remember it later when you need it, instead of having to memorize once, memorize twice, memorize again and again and again and again and again. So, eventually we'll get to memorizing and I'll have a video giving you tips on how to memorize, patterns to look for, ways to make memorizing the unit chart easier, but really you just want that to be backup. Learning to do it the right way is gonna be the easy way in the long run. So I'll see you in the next video.